This is Rating Descending. Where we watch IMDb's worst 250 movies so you don't have to. I'm Michelle St. Clair. I'm Abigail Ward. And this week we watched 50 Shades of Black. An inexperienced college student meets a wealthy businessman whose sexual practices put a strain on their relationship. Let's watch. So listen, I gotta, I gotta, you know, occasionally we, we bring a bit, mm. you know, a, a not so much pre-prepared bit so much as a preconceived bit, mm. you know, on the weekend, came up with a joke with a good friend of mine, Simone McGinniskin, right? Which was, what if Paul Atreides was a cockney nut job, mm. right? Going around, oi, listen here, I'm the Muad Deep, there's the Shia Lud. What do you think? Uh, of the bit? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It's like, check it out. I'm Paul Atreides. Me dad's getting killed. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm the Lisan Argayib. Here I am, out in Arrakis. What do you think? Is it Timothy Chalamet doing the Cockney accent, or is it just like an actual old Cockney geezer? He, Timothy Chalamet would be doing it because Timothy, I, I don't know if you know this, Timothy Chalamet plays Paul Atreides in the Dune movies. Yeah, I know. And so <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm asking, is he doing it, or no, 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 are you I getting don't... a Cockney nut job in to replace no, 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 him? I don't, I don't think you're understanding it. So, so Timothy Chalamet, he just plays Paul. Paul, to his core... Is a Cockney nut job in every way, so he wouldn't be able to accurately in this in this universe. He wouldn't be able to accurately do Paul if not doing a Cockney accent. But I don't know why it wouldn't be Timothy Chalamet doing it. So it's just the character, not the actor, unable to put on any other. Yeah, he's not he's not Cockney. Yeah. If it's Timothy Chalamet, I'd like it less. Okay. Who do you think? What Cockney nut job do you think should be playing Paul? I don't know, I'm imagining one of the two Ronnies. <laughs> Aren't they both dead? Yeah. Okay. Both very, if not dead, very old. Yeah. Yeah, it's an all right bit. Yeah. But it's not my favorite bit. It's not your favorite bit. Not really. What's your favorite? What's one of the hits? What if what uh, if what if the classics? Cockney nut job was Dick Van Dyke as he does in Mary Poppins? As Paul Atreides. As Paul Atreides. So Dick Van Dyke as and he's a chimney sweep. And he's a chimney sweep. Then still. I'm behind it. Yeah. Fully. I've got a chimney sweep. I'm going to use it to try and climb this worm. Bloody hell, look at that over there. We already had to watch Timothy Chalamet do an extravagant performance for Wonka, and that was a bit... <laughs> so let's veer from him and stick to Dick Van Dyke. I like how you said we already had to. I didn't see it. <laughs> I <laughs> haven't seen didn't, it either. Didn't, you have to, I've <laughs> only seen snippets. <laughs> well, then you don't know if the performance is it bad. It brought sadness to my soul. <laughs> Well, look, I'm not, I'm not, what I, all I'm approaching is saying that I don't necessarily know if the movie's bad. I just want to make it clear that we didn't have to watch it. I do want to say, though, that Michelle was like, what should we talk about for the beginning of this <laughs> podcast? And then she went, oh, no, I've got it. And this was that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you have brought nothing. I've at least brought one theoretical bit, which is now Dick Van Dyke as his character in Mary Poppins. I cannot remember the name of that character as Paul Atreides in I June. I brought nothing. I've brought my body, not my soul or my mind, but I'm physically here. You should be bringing your soul and your mind. Not today. Not today. Not today. You can't do it today. <laughs> no. Come on, we physically juice, I'm present. <laughs> Mentally, I'm back in bed. <laughs> back Being in sleepy. bed. Little little eepy sleepy. <gasps> little eepy <gasps> abby. Yeah. You I've, you've been getting your doctorate in hunk shoe with a masters in me me me. Yeah, that's right. Me me me. Bobo land. Bobo Land. That's where I go when the I hell fall asleep. Is Bobo Land. It's where I fucking sleep. What? I. It's we, where I go when I'm asleep. <laughs> no, explain more. What is e- Bobo Land? Everyone goes to Bobo Land when they're taking I, Bobos. I don't go to Bobo. Well, they're taking Bobo. Yeah. I don't go to Bobo Land. I. I. You've I never dream. been to Bobo Land. I dream of that's many Bobo places. That's Bobo Land, bitch. That's not your that's, dreams. That's the dream. Yeah, you're in Bobo Land. <laughs> why? <laughs> you know why? Because nothing's like right in your dreams. You know how like you have a dream about someone, but they don't look like themselves. That's because yeah. you're in Bobo Land. Why is it called Bobo Land? Because then? it's where you go to Bobo. What what is what is Bob? I have never heard the term to Bobo. <laughs> You've never heard the term Bobo Land? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> no. Listeners, email us at ratingdescending at gmail dot com if you have heard the term Bobo Land before, because it's a thing. I really thought you were doing a weird bit, and then you kept thinking that I was doing some bit and didn't understand it. I really don't understand what Bobo Land is. Cle- again, clearly you've just never been to Bobo Land. No, I suppose. I, I clearly well, because because. 
I, I've talked about this on the podcast before because I have intrusive thoughts. Sometimes I have quite intrusive stress streams um, that I try to modify as much as possible, usually by listening to podcasts and stuff. So it has been a lot better in recent years. Mm. Um, is, is the nightmares, is that Bobo land or is Bobo land where I'm thresholded from entering? Bobo and land is not a negative in, space. In hell, no, right? no, no, no. Bobo land's not a negative space. You don't have nightmares in Bobo land. So, right. So, so nightmare is the counter opposite to Bobo land. Bobo Fully. land is where, is it just good dreams or does it include purgatory too? It, it includes confusing dreams. Like okay, we're like, sure. well, that was weird, but it wasn't negative. Right. You're like in Bobo land, but you, Certainly don't have negative experiences when you're in Bobo Land. I mean, it's all like about Biba Land or or yeah or Bobby Land, Boo Land, Boo Boo Land, some sort of or instead of Bobo Ob Ob. Yeah, it's, it's negative. It's reverse. I'm in Ob Ob Land. And then if you ascend high enough, you'll go into Boba Land. It's just a lot oh. of sweet teas. Hell yeah, baby! That's all I could hope <laughs> I for. Don't like boba. Oh, you don't like Boba? What, don't. Do you, what don't you like about Boba? I don't like the the balls. You don't like the tapioca balls? No. They're too, what, in what way? Are they too chewy? Ooey, chewy, oogie, boogie, go up the straw into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That's my experience with it. I what, I what I almost resent is how well that explained it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, for your brain, for sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I've adapted <yeah>. for you. <laughs> thank, no, thank no, 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 let me tuck aside my <laughs> use of the English language. You're We're really, all about onomatopoeia today. You're really cutting into me today. <laughs> You don't understand Boba Land? Oh, let me dumb it down for you. Yeah. Ooey, gooey, chewy, piff. <laughs> and you went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it works. For sure. That's why it's hurtful, is I that know. you're right. <laughs> I know. But yeah, it's my birthday tomorrow. Yeah, you're turning 30? Yep, 30, apparently, <laughs> according to Michelle and everyone else now. It's a bit. No, Michelle, I'm turning 29. Yeah. Bitch. Wow. wow. Bitch. Last year, you're 20. It also will mark six months until you're 30, though. Wow, I don't think that's true. Last six months of in your, like being in your twenties, how will that feel? Um, Actually, this is about me. It's my birthday <laughs> tomorrow. Woo! How does it how does it feel to be you know rapidly approaching thirty? I don't feel it. I'm 28, so I'm like I still feel so far away from it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sure. I just don't, I don't even have to think about it. Still so far away. So far away. It's not even not even there. Not even in your rearview mirror. Well, I don't know why we fear being in our 30s. It sounds no. pretty fucking sick. It it's going to be better. a good decade. Yeah. Like honestly, again, your 20s just like blow so hard, and then when you meet like people that are in their early 20s, you're like, yeah, I was this annoying, and life was this shit. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks. I mean, when I'm like beating people down because i got the last water ration before the climate wars break out mm. i will be going you know what i do prefer being 36 to 26 yeah <laughs> yeah know? honestly they again they really got it right in suddenly 30 it's yeah. gonna be our best decade and to be Was fair that the takeaway of suddenly 30 well it's like yeah they say like the whole idea is that she's reading a magazine when she's like 13 and yeah. she reads that in, like everyone's talking about how the 30s are your best decade and right. everyone's like i had turned 30 and i'm 30 flirting and thriving i thought the takeaway was to appreciate the age you are that's the theme of the movie right but she, when she begins she's like wow 30s are gonna be my best decade it's oh, not like she's okay. suddenly 21 yeah, it's a shit the movie, time the movie i guess it doesn't quite prove her wrong but it it doesn't feel like the movie is setting out to prove that but theorem it's, right. It's actually not really saying oh, they're wrong. Being thirty does suck. That's not what the movie is saying. I think it's, it's funny saying it's and it's not. It's also not about appreciating the age that you're in. <laughs> it's about not going down the wrong path with the wrong friends because you want to be cool. It's about go- sticking to your the, the guy that is your bestie and See, not th- fucking. This is part of my problem with the movie. That has nothing to do with the like thematic conceit of what's going on. I don't like that you're criticizing suddenly 30 uh, it's it's a pretty good film it's fascinating to me that there's only five movies we ever talk about at this podcast <laughs> <laughs> one is that one is bride and prejudice yeah, one, one is <laughs> the other is looking for aloe brandy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you seen it by the way no uh, <laughs> i mean for a I while it was bride and prejudice for a while it was euro trip but then i finally <laughs> oh, yeah. reminded you that you did show it to me <laughs> yeah that's right that's right i do have this annoying habit of like our good friend tony Mm-hmm. There was this time where apparently every time I saw him, I was like, have you heard of this place called Ice Cream Social? And he was like, we went there together. <laughs> he was so sick of it. <laughs> so sick of it. I think knowing me is knowing that I will ask you the same questions again and again. Well, hey, speaking of uh, having to go through the same experience again and again, this mm. week we watched Fifty Shades of Black. We did. What a segue. Deja vu. I know. This 
to me is hilarious because we're watching we watched 50 shades of black a direct parody of 50 shades of gray a franchise that we watched ev- all three movies of itself based on fan fiction of twilight a franchise that we also watched every movie of yeah. stephanie meyer is directly responsible for so much of our misery mm. oh she just keeps coming back for more i can't i can't what believe would this it list be without her <laughs> honestly yeah. we would be down so many movies <laughs> we really would <laughs> like, and bonus episodes and bonus episodes yeah look can i tell you i'll be honest yeah don't <laughs> don't this is becoming such a recurring <laughs> i didn't hate it why didn't you hate it uh- <laughs> Because what it was taking a swipe at is so easy to take a swipe at. And because we're so familiar with it now, I kind of enjoyed it. Felt like coming home to a warm hug from a friend. Honestly, yeah. (laughs) To be fair, when I was watching it, I was like, I feel like we've made these jokes about Fifty Shades of Grey. And I have to say some of the humor in it reminded me of like intrusive thoughts I have of comedic (laughs) scenarios. So sometimes I'd be like, (laughs) (laughs) there was plenty of terrible bits, but I did laugh at a lot of bits. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I was giggling in bed and then something else happened and i giggled again and i was like i don't know again i don't know if it's me or if it's the film like i don't know no any listeners at home who've been keeping track of our intelligence like you know <laughs> like how mr on the website has been keeping track of our ratings or like how julian leger used to do if you're keeping track of our uh, iq at home yeah you can mark it down another notch now. well hey can i say it's not like if we watched Little Man right now, I'd hate it. Still, I would hate it. I'd be like, I want to, I want to die. But watching this, I was like, it's kind of funny. I do think it's kind of funny, and so genuinely, that kind of helps me mentally uh, grasp the fact that maybe it's not a, a an IQ issue. I think it's just that <laughs> the movies are I, getting better. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, I just feel like Little Man was just this real cut. I just, there was nothing that was redeeming about it. Sure. But there was a couple of jokes in this where I was like, you know what? Marlon Wayans is actually really funny. Like he's, a, he's got great, great comedic timing. He does. Sure. He's yeah. got some great delivery. When we saw him in Dungeons and Dragons, he was funny. And he like was. the role wasn't good and was tonally all he over the place, funny. but he was, he was funny. He was always the standout of the scary movies as well. For me as a kid, I liked him the most. Was it Marlon Wayans or different Wayne? I think it was Marlon Wayans who also recently made uh, for pride a post, uh, like supporting queer people because well, yeah. of, I think his nephew or niece, he lost like a hundred thousand followers and he was like, I don't give a fuck. No, Marlon Wayans is actually a great guy. Yeah. I, he's, I, we're not besmirching the man. He's a fantastic guy. I actually like, I have full, you know, tr- <laughs> I have warm feelings for Marlon Wayans. I really do. And so in this, there was that bit where she says there's just there was a lot of funny jokes where i was like <laughs> you and i would do that bit i was actually watching it being like we've done bits like that oh, before no it's true no we're not above this michelle what i hate we're as bad as this you are convincing me i think you might be right it's true because like, i was like this sounds like a bit me and michelle would do there's that bit where he's like so tell me hannah what uh, uh you know poets got you into literature was it shelly keats byron and she's like zeus <laughs> <laughs> We, you're right. We would do a bit like that. I thought that, that was funny. It is kind of funny. There I, are funny bits in this. I did write down some of the jokes I like. Now, look, uh, uh, admittedly, for this episode, this is probably one of the, for me, longer gaps between watching it and doing the recording. So I'm going to be relying on you to help me remember some of these good jokes yeah. as well as my notes and stuff. But, yeah. like, I, I do, looking at my notes now, I do have a lot of times where I go, okay, I did I did laugh at that. Yeah. Okay, that was kind of funny. Yeah. Okay, that one was good. You know what? Maybe you're right. I think I had a, I actually had a good time watching this. There wasn't any moments where I was like, I need to take a break. I watched the whole thing in bed and yeah. I actually just kind of enjoyed myself. I, I did have a, mo- a better time with it than last week's movie, Police Academy Fully. 7. Fully. Me too. Yeah. There were genuinely some really fucking funny jokes. And the girl who played Hannah... I thought she was... Kelly Hawk. She's in uh, an arc of New Girl, and she's oh, really funny in that, she's, too. She's really funny in this. There were some performances she was good where in this. someone would say something, like, outrageous and horrible, and she'd be like, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. And she had, that, she had a good straight face. She, had a, she, had a good, she was a good straight man. Yeah. She also did a lot of, like... A thing that a lot of the actors in these specific, like, the Marla Wayne-style parody movies get mm. wrong, which is the, like comedic code switching between the much more white pattern speech of the movie that they're parodying mm. and then going into, you know, AAVE culturally specific black talk. Mm. And 
she did that in a really funny way. Yeah. Instead of it kind of feeling like a, are you making fun of black people or is it? Fully. I don't, I don't and it's like, it, it just felt like they were actually making fun of, I felt like they were making fun of 50 shades of gray, obviously, totally. but they were also totally, but they were also <laughs> making fun of <laughs> look controversial statement. I think they were yeah. making fun of that film. Yeah. No, I but think, also, I think you might be onto something. I think they were also pointing out how white it was, how yeah. the lack, the, the absence of black characters, black people, black culture, it's very white upper class Seattle life. Yeah, and the Jane Seymour character really oh, showcases dude. that. She Jane is- Seymour, look, she is way too good for this film. I was so disappointed <laughs> yeah. to see her there. But, that, and Fred Willard in his little cameo as yeah, well. But, I was like... I, I confess, like, whilst I think Fred Willard is a hilarious person who I like... Sunk in He's yeah. sunk He sinks lower. He's not too good for this movie. Yeah, sink low, sweet chariot, all right? That's <laughs> Fred Willard's tagline. <laughs> That's but he, good. but Jane Seymour, too good for this. Too good. I, for this. I love her. Florence Henderson, too good for this. Yeah, but I, I, I will say, I think that the there was just a couple of because we know Fifty Shades of Grey yeah. inside and out because we watched them before the podcast and then we watched it again for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I remember that film really. Th- I, I feel, yeah. I feel like I really remember it, which means that when they were doing certain bits, I it it registered better for me because I could kind of see exactly what scene they were taking. I mean, I mean, some of my upfront critiques that were positive yeah. were, I appreciate that it's a more direct parody, which means it has a story yeah. rather than say like the hungry games or whatever, where it's just kind of like eight plots stacked uh, on top of each other and doesn't want to, that's the thing. At I least hate I could those. still know that I hated the hungry games. That yeah. made me like despondent. It, by being more specific with the jokes, by going after mostly 50 shades of gray mm. and sometimes dabbling in other movies yeah. rather than eight movies at once. It, it is more universal in its yeah. comedy, right? Yeah. And I also think that, again, some of the comedic beats were done really well. And also, I genuinely loved it at the end when she was beating the shit out of him on the table. And she was being like, that's for that small white girl in the movie. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, Dakota Johnson. And she's like, she was naked for half the film. It was so gratuitous. <laughs> they did not need to do that to her. That was her. good. I that was, was like, good. Yeah. You know what? You know what? You're, you're bringing me around. You're Dude, bringing me around. I actually think there were like a lot of redeeming moments in this. I did and- appreciate in that same scene, there's a, <laughs> they name drop Soul Plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, why did they make that? <laughs> <laughs> also like the fucking jokes about how she's like supposedly ugly um <laughs> that was like baffling that was baffling because she's a lovely looking girl but then he was like you know you got that weird hair and that usher looking nose like there were like all these little like tiny throwaway lines where i was like the reason this is funny is that sometimes there were so many jokes that they wouldn't linger on them and that mm. made it kind of funny it was kind of like gone in the wind yeah but but that's see that's my problem with it though mm. is like for with that joke you know your weird hair your usher looking nose that's a good joke the, the him sort of doing a throwaway insult to her and mm. the specificity of the insult it's a good joke mm. it just doesn't make any sense with the actual scene and physical person that we're presented with i think that's the joke is that but she's really doesn't nice make looking any sense to me right. that's why i didn't think it was offensive it's not like they got, i like, didn't some, think it was offensive no but that, I, it's not like they got some like i don't know average looking girl and they're all like she's ugly she's a really pretty girl and everyone's being like whoa you could do so much better than her so i'm like it's very inoffensive as a joke you know sure, sure not sure. the best joke in the film but Look, do you want to hear some key details yeah man <laughs> All right, so this movie came out in 2016. Uh, director was Michael Tids or Michael Tiddies, hard to hard to tell. Um, yeah, Tiddies. <laughs> Up top. Uh, well, let's not really do it. Skin. Come skin. on, come on, come okay. on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got skin. Um, he's mostly directed other. Sorry, we were at a party the other night. <laughs> And I was making bad conversation. I just didn't know how to make conversation that night. I felt really like weird and awkward. And then at one point I turned to Simone, our good friend, Simone McKenskin. And I asked her, I was like, so do you have a soft body? (laughs) And everyone was like, what? And I was like, you know, like soft body. I like dragged my hands across my tits. Didn't know what I was talking about. And then we Simone really are like, not I, so different. I guess so. And then Claude was like, "What are you doing? <laughs> what are you talking about? Why are you asking me if they have soft bodies?" <laughs> oh my god! Sometimes, especially because you know, you, you you got a house, you got a loving husband, you know, you're 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 a well put together person and stuff. Sometimes I'm like, man, I feel like a weird little gremlin. And then you open your mouth, and I'm like, now nah, we're the same. Oh yeah. You and me, we're the same. Oh, it's it's messy in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little little goblin, up gab, <laughs> up gab, up gab. Give me a gabby. <laughs> All right, uh, Michael Titties, who has mostly done other Marlon Wayans, Marlon Wayans movies, yeah. starring Marlon Wayans and Carly Hawk. 
yeah. primarily. That's the woman from New Girl played the Hannah character. Returning actor, main one, Marlon Wayans, who was in Little Man, yep. Marmaduke, yep. Norbit, yep. and Dungeons and Dragons. Is this his fifth film? This is his fifth film. Is he an all-star? Like, is he a reigning champion at this point? He, he is not reigning champion because if you remember, the, the like that puts him tied for second with Andrew Ailey and Sylvester Stallone. Mm. Number one is still Michael Papa John. Uh, Michael Papa John. Michael Papa John. We need to get him on for this podcast. We gotta, we gotta get the John. Bonus episode. We gotta get good old Daddy Three John. Three hour interview with Michael Papa John. <laughs> Going through each of these roles. Uh, yeah. All right. The budget was actually no. What do you think it was? Oh, dude. 2016. 2016. Looks pretty nice. Uh, I do think it was genuinely kind of well shot. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of gorgeous. Because they were rap- like replicating all the you know luxury shots yeah, of but, the penthouse Yeah, but none apartment. of the other parody movies we watch can successfully replicate no, anything. No, fully, fully. Oh, God. I don't know. Was it uh, 50 mil? Five. What? Five. What? Yeah. Five million. Five million. Are you serious? Yeah, genuinely. That's really impressive. It, that's... It really kind of is. That's <laughs> yeah. why I was like, it's gorgeous for five million. Yeah. Like, oh my god, it right. made twenty two point two million. So critically, like commercial <laughs> no, not success, critically. No, no, no. not critically, <laughs> but commercial success. Yeah, they did well. Mm. They they kind of did exactly like I can see where some of the five mil economizing is and stuff, but mm. like, and, and I guess in the sense I've seen like sketch shows that are shot as well as this, but yeah. there's so many of these kinds of movies end up looking like absolute shit. Fully, but I do like when he, you know, like you think it's going to be the helicopter scene and then he's like you think i was going to take you in a helicopter we haven't even fucked yet <laughs> I thought that was funny. yeah that was funny. just in the back of a bus that was kind of funny it was kind of funny that was kind of good so here's the overview i did something slightly controversial what? it's quite a short overview okay it's the plot of 50 shades of gray but everyone is black except jane seymour <laughs> yes <laughs> and her housemate i kind of I kind of, when I went to write the inter- overview, I started writing it and I was like, broad beat speaking, this is just, this, we've done this overview. We have. We've we've done this overview multiple times because we also talked about Twilight. Yeah. I, is, I didn't feel, something smacks of we've done a different Fifty Shades parody, but maybe I'm misremembering. I don't think so. Either way, we've talked about that because we, we've also talked about the plot of the original yeah. in the sequels and yeah. stuff. I kind of don't know if it's worth our time. I don't think it is either. It's like, you get the premise. It's kind of pretty much just the plot. Like, it is. Like, that's why I was almost impressed. I was like, wow, beat for beat, they've really followed Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, they really did. Yeah. We, you really are bringing me around and convincing <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, dude. So I'm really like, yeah, you know what? They kind of nailed it. Yeah. I feel like it took the mickey out of the film in all the right ways. Because, yeah, look, it's an easy target. But also, it's a fucking shit film. It really is. It's mm. a really... Fifty Shades of Grey can fucking wipe my ass. That bit at the beginning when Hannah Steele is trying to ask for a pencil and she's like doing this, yeah. like turning her head and then he's like grabbing shit on his desk trying to offer it. And then he's like, what do you want? Yeah. Um, I thought it was really funny because Dakota Johnson has that weird <laughs> fucking shy girl shit going on with Anastasia Steele being like, um, can, I, uh, can, can, can I get a, uh, I just need a pencil. It's just, it's so funny because I, I stand by, I do like Dakota Johnson as an actress and this list does not make the case for it because yeah. I don't think she is particularly good in the Fifty Shades movies, nor no. is she particularly great in, no. what was it, Wounds? <sighs> she was bad in Wounds. Yeah, but she is great in other movies. She's good in Bad Times at the El Royale. She was good in The Lost Daughter. She's good in The Lost Daughter. She's a, she's a great actress. She's good. She's not- the, the recent thing about nepotism was pretty funny. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. Where she was basically like, get over it. <laughs> and I was like, that's not the right, <laughs> not the right way. Just own so it. Weird. Just own it and be like, yeah, I had advantages because my mum was fucking Melanie Griffiths. Yeah. Well, especially since it's you've, annoying. you've got such a clear example of, of Jack Quaid um, yeah. going like, yeah, totally. I benefit, benefited from this. Oh, and then fully. Maya Hawke even going like, yeah, but I am going to do it anyway. And I'm like, you know what? We should all have that attitude. Literally, <laughs> it's uh, no one's asking you to apologize for being born to these people. But people are asking you to acknowledge the fact that you did have advantages because you were born to these people. That's it. No one's saying you should feel bad about it. But people are saying you have to admit you probably got further because your parents were famous and yeah. you were in the community. You well, were in the culture. Which also, like, as... They, many, many of the Nepo babies do try and point out a, as a defense, you know, like 
And and I do think this is true. Like, hey, this is true of many industries. Many plumbers mm. work with their sons and stuff, yeah. you know? And, like, yeah, the, is that nepotism? It's like, well, only if they're bad do we think that's bad, you know? Mm. But we tend to more think... We traditionally thought of nepotism more in terms of, like, a business setting, hire your fucking fail son um, mm. nephew, and then he actually is really bad at his fucking job. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, oh, I got the connections and got into it. It's like, the reason that that's bad is that it steals connections from other people. It does. And no one's saying that, like... I, I understand the plumber, you know, like, uh, it, th- that argument saying that, well, your dad did it, and that's why you might end up doing it. And it might be easier for you to do it because your dad was a plumber. Sure. Plumbers aren't coveted things. Well, that's and, the thing. And, and it's not like a career that is incredibly competitive and difficult in the first place. And, but people are becoming like pe- people criticize Nepo babies because they're Nepo babies in a, in a career that brings you immense wealth and fame. Mm. And that's very different from being an everyday plumber. I mean, Marlon Wayans is a Nepo baby himself. He is. <laughs> you know, I do think because it was part of that same. Was it the same sequence or a different sequence? There's a bit where he pulls up the Fifty Shades book. And then he reads it to he her. Reads it to and her. She, it's more torturous than anything. Yeah, and, she, and he basically looks at the camera and is like, "This is a big pile of shit." Yeah, which like, yeah, it was a bit on the nose. Well, especially since like this is this movie has like three point five on IMDb. Like, I, I would watch this movie again over Fifty Shades of Grey. Me too, but I yeah. do think if you're gonna be so on the nose that thing was rubbish, you better be making a pretty airtight movie. You better like. We actually got it without that scene that you <laughs> yeah. were making fun of Fifty Shades of Grey and that yeah. you were making fun of it being bad. We got it. Yeah. I, do I didn't also, need that moment. I do also think, like, it is the difference between, like, some of my favorite movies are fundamentally parodies that also love the source material. Mm. You know, like, Top Secret is a movie that I think doesn't actually think that those sort of spy action movies or, like, The Great Escape is are bad. Mm. It, but it is riffing on them. Yeah, a homage. An homage. A nod to. In the same way that Scream, uh, it, that you could arguably say is like parodying a lot of slasher movies, but it clearly loves slashers. And it's like, is to it a different parodying this, it? Or but... is it really just like, a, again, is it a homage? To, like, or is it like a, a, a genuinely like nodding the head to like a horror film tropes it's rather than satirizing. being like, fuck you guys, you guys make shit. It's just being like, we know the tropes and we're playing with them because we like the genre, you know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's. Etc. I mean, this isn't doing any of that, but that's that's what I mean. Yeah. That, like, I guess we've we've come in like you you're turning me around that it's not a complete pile of shit. It's not sure. a complete pile of shit. Genuinely, I had a good time watching it. <laughs> I didn't. This now, is getting above a good year, Michelle. Because oh my god, <laughs> obviously it is. No. I would much rather rewatch this. There was a great Cuba Gooding Jr. joke towards the end that I wish I could remember, but um. I was, they were talking about Cuba Gooding being in certain films and he kept quoting yeah, films that he was in and then he's right. like, I've got to stop like binging Netflix. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, she said like, why are you so obsessed with Cuba Gooding Jr.? Yeah. Something? Yeah. That yeah. was, that was fun. There's I, also I, that I bit where he's like it. spanking her and then he's like, he, she's trying to interrogate her over Osama Bin Laden and she's like, he's been dead for five years. <laughs> and then later at the end, he's like, and you were right about Osama Bin Laden. Yeah. Who knew? Because at the time he was like, I don't keep up with current events. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was funny. I did laugh there at that bit. bit. Funny. I'm sorry, but when we do our bits, we often do these like ridiculous big things and then we're like saying stupid casual shit, inane shit while we're doing it. And that's exactly what Marlon Wayans was doing so in I this guess film. This is what we're destined for. We too could make a Fifty Shades of Grey parody. Yeah. But um we we'll make we'll make a white parody of it. Oh yeah. We'll do Fifty Shades of White. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll and it's be, the parody of Fifty Shades of Black. It'll be even wider. Oh, so we're not even parodying Fifty Shades of Grey. We're nah. parodying Fifty Shades of Black. Yeah, which means... Oh, no, Abby, no. <laughs> no, got to do d- black Don't face. give me... Don't. <laughs> Beep. Oh, sorry. There's a technical problem. <laughs> oh, we gotta. <laughs> I will say, towards the end... Because you're a fan of this movie, because you love well, this movie, I, I because you I'd love go this movie, that far with it. I, I want you to explain something for me because I wrote down: Did I black out? Why did that strip scene just happen? Because I feel like I'm I missed 
a moment and then he, suddenly I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. He at was all. talking about his like backstory and how he met someone at a strip club and then it was just a really elongated scene it's of him really stripping long. at the strip club. Did it he, did. It went for ages. Meet at that strip club. I can't even that was remember. Relevant. Right. Okay. I think he was just like, it's when I was dancing at that strip club and then it was at that really sure. long scene. To be fair, when he did put his shirt down his pants and like pulled it back <laughs> and forth and then pulled it out and threw it at the girl and it was covered in shit. <laughs> That was kind of funny. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. The idea that he just doesn't wipe is kind of funny. <laughs> He's just got a shitty ass. <laughs> yeah. But, there's, but there's a, like, it has these good throwaway gags, but the extended gag is that he yeah. then takes off his underwear and his penis is so tiny and everyone yeah. makes fun of him. And then he's like, and then, no. You know, his little brother has a huge penis yeah. and it's so long, it's like, you know, flopping it, around it, everywhere. It's like a fucking whip. Like, the penis jokes are the worst bit. Penis jokes. Obviously. Although there was one ball joke that I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> Do you mean the bit? Where he pulled out his balls? He pulled out his... Because because he was talking about blue balls, and then he pulls out his enormous balls. I, now, that itself I didn't think was that funny. I but, didn't think it was funny either, but, but talking about it is so stupid. But her going, I don't know what... I don't know what to like, do. Uh, Why are you showing me yeah, this? It's really funny. It's really funny. <laughs> I don't know what her to do. Why are you showing me this? Really... <laughs> That's that was also a moment where I thought that's something we would <laughs> improv is, together. It is, yeah. I don't he know pulls out his huge balls. I don't know what you, I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, it was funny. That was funny. God. Let's do a rewatch. <laughs> Let's right, watch it again re-watch. after this. <laughs> Oh my god! And then the the brother did have. Oh, I, this was, I think, the first joke that I was like, you know what? That it, that landed perfectly exactly, because he's he's introducing himself to Hannah. Yeah. And he's like, I'm Eli, like the movie about the book, because mm. it's that movie that uh, Denzel Washington movie that would have been popular at the time, Book of Eli. Mm. I don't know why, but that line was great. The idea that he, his frame of reference for who Eli is yeah. and what that name is is the movie about the book. Yeah, yeah. That's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> And I will also say there's a bit where Eli's having sex with Hannah's housemate yeah. and he's kind of just singing as he's going and she's like, can you give me a D major, G major? And it was just really weird and surreal him going like, ah, ah, as he's like fucking, you know, balls deep in her. And I was like, it's kind of stupid. I love it. There was a lot. It, it made me self-conscious about my sense of humor, but I also laughed. Mm, yeah. I mean... That's my IMDb review. He, okay, before before we move <laughs> into the next section, this could just be a shorter episode because we're just we just like it. Um, do you think this was a joke about product placement or was product placement itself? Because there's a bit where she gets a laptop and then her housemate, who is white but does so much AV sort of talking, is like wait a minute, is that a retina display MacBook Pro? Which smacks to me of corporate mandated has to be described Probably. this way. it has to be. Because that, yeah. that sucked. Yeah. Is that a Retina Display MacBook Pro? Yeah, that did suck. That's terrible. It's probably where they got a lot of their funding from. Yeah, One what... mil of the five mil was pitched in by Apple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, hey, do you want to hear some trivia? I do. Hell yeah. All right. There's not a huge amount of trivia, but I've got some. I've mm-hmm. got some. Uh, this this is a sad one. This was Florence Henderson's last film before she died. Oh. She died, I think, like only a few months before the premiere. Oh shit. Yeah. What was this it? This was it. This was this was it. In that role. In that role. Oh, we didn't even talk about that scene, which was, I think, the premise of Whiplash, but it's sex is pretty good for yeah a it actually was it's pretty good for a am sketch. i dragging <laughs> yeah rushing or dragging <laughs> Slack. <Smack. laughs> yeah that's good um oh yeah the so the friend character of hers um katisha kava helna uh was played by an actress named J- jenny zagrino and mm. i did note this when i was trying to check what everyone else's you know, histories were and stuff. Uh, that link on Wikipedia just goes straight to Bad Santa 2. What? Which I think is because that's the only other role she's in. You mean the housemate that she yeah. lives with? Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, so I think that's very funny that rather than just not having it be black, it just takes you to Bad Santa 2. There is no extra information about her on Bad Santa 2. <laughs> I feel like her character sucked. Yes. But she was kind of given it. There was like one. Well, you should bit, see her in Bad Santa too. Uh, well, there was this one bit. I'm surprised she didn't get more roles because there was this one bit where she was on the couch and then like after Eli's like had sex with her and he's singing and he comes really quickly and she's like, "Is that it? I gotta go to church." While she's checking her nails and I was like, "Great delivery. Good delivery. She could have gone further. Good line read. Yeah. 
Um, here's the last one, uh, which I mostly kept because I, this is verbatim how it's burp. written, and I was a little baffled by it. Did you like it? No, I didn't like it. Okay. I didn't like the book. While Christian Black has Hannah tied up and reading to her, though the title of the book is covered, the art cover is that of Fifty Shades of Grey. He comments that the book is horrible and wonders which third grader wrote it. This film is a parody based off of Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, my God. 18 people found this helpful. (laughs) How many people found it unhelpful? 14. Yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, but what surprises me is that people were like, oh, Uh, that's good. Yeah, now I get it. Do you want to hear some reviews? Yeah, ma'am. Yes. This movie has a 3.5 on IMDb, the first of 3.5s. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it has a 4% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> so if, if your review is positive, know that that makes you one of 4% of elite <laughs> reviewers. I'm not afraid to think my own thoughts. You should be. Um, the Rotten Tomatoes critical consensus <laughs> was wildly erratic even for a spoof movie. Fifty Shades of Black bears the unfortunate distinction of offering fewer laughs than the unintentionally funny film it's trying to lampoon. You tell me, Michelle, mm-hmm. is this better or worse than Wounds? It's better than Wounds. Yeah. It's better than Wounds. Is it better or worse than Little Man? I think it's the same as Little Man. Really? I think some of the jokes in it were better. I think as a movie, it's pretty much the same. Oh, I don't know, man. The CGI'd Little Man, like the head on the little... <laughs> I can't... I don't, wanna, I don't even want to think about it. It brings <laughs> me back to a dark place. It's, is I, this better or worse than Yoga Hoses? I didn't... Oh, that's tricky because, I mean, I do think it's better. But Yoga Hoses is, has cult appreciation. Who gives a shit about cult appreciation? We know it was trash. <laughs> It's really hard to argue with that. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what other people think. I know my truth. <laughs> it was shit. And your truth is that Fifty Shades of Black is, in fact, the, the thing that should have cult appreciation. No, I just don't agree that yoga hoses should have any. Look, I was coming down a lot when I watched yoga hoses. Yeah, that's true. Both of us, as we've said before, di- were, in fact, near tears beforehand because you were coming down. I was just exhausted and burnt out. And we had a little cry. We had a little cry. <laughs> <laughs> our intro that we cut down to 10 minutes was in fact 40 minutes of recording oh, i'll be like are you okay we got this we got this we, we got this it's all right it's all right let's just bring it down yeah you know what we should have done that night what? we probably should have just not recorded yeah like i'm glad we got through it but we also just should have been like hey let's who cares let's take the night yeah but i think it's a pretty good episode mm. maybe we should cry more often i'm crying right now oh yeah. that's cute i'm crying into my body Oh. That's how I hide my tears. It's like a reverse cry. Yeah, when I feel them come out, I like suck them back in really quickly. You're resorbing them? Yeah. Yeah. I can't waste that fluid. <laughs> oh, so you were like, Paul Atreides. <laughs> can't waste that fluid. Yeah, it all, co- it all comes back. <laughs> then we bloody still so I have I- to imagine Dick Van Dyke, though. Yeah. Dick oh, Van Dyke. I re- so I'm, tr- I'm trying to do a little, I reabsorb my tears. <laughs> Bob's your uncle, and here we go. Mm. Is that closer to Dick Van Dyke? I, haven't, I, I don't know him well enough. You've seen Mary Poppins. I though. have, but yeah. I, Do you remember I, Mary I haven't Poppins? seen. I really haven't seen Dick Van Dyke in anything else. Well, he doesn't sound anything like that. He's an American man. Yeah, but I don't really. I can't tell. Well, <laughs> but I trust you implicitly. Thank you. Thank you. You <laughs> should welcome. check out the Dick Van Dyke show and the Mary Tyler Moore show. As goes for every listener. I here. have seen the Mary Tyler Moore show. He's in there, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, so I it sounds like you're a real dickhead. To. I couldn't give you a Mary Tyler Moore impression if that's what you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty good. No. Um, uh, Corey Coleman of Double Toasted ended his review by starting an online petition to stop Marlon Wayans from making any more parody films. What? Which is kind of a dick Not move. my Marlon. <laughs> Not my Marlon. I love him. I love him. Marlon Wayans. Um, here's the first IMDb review. Um, if you like crass, gross comedy, you'll love this by Logan-323-516061. It is as, sorry, I, I paused because Abby's face was of such consternation <laughs> and concentration. I was really just trying to see the numbers on, on paper there. I got it. I got it. <laughs> trying to picture them. Yeah. Um, Here's the review. I am astounded that this has such a low rating. For a comedy, it's hilarious. I've watched it several times and friends and I laughed hysterically. Many times we had to rewind the movie because we missed the next joke from laughing so much. So many comedies these days aren't funny. They may be good, they may have interesting jokes, but they don't often make me laugh out loud. This movie is different because it made me laugh, and I mean hard. 
straight from the gut laughs. It's so funny that people will to my room to see what I'm laughing at. And what's even better is that it's funny from start to finish. This really worked on the script because there's something funny in every scene. And that's rare. But you have to like dark, juvenile humor. Mm. 10 out of 10. Mm. He gets it. He gets it. Yeah. Did you write this one? Yeah, that was me. Here's another one titled Comedy Version of Fifty Shades of Grey by Rajat Sean 64 that is so, so full of comedy. It is comedy version of Fifty Shades of Grey. Whole story is same as, I guess, but topic are now changed. Grey is all about romance and drama, and this is all about comedy. Or else you can say this is the same comedy version, like Meet the Spartan is comedy version no, of 300. No, don't talk about Meet so the Spartan. So when you are going to watch a comedy version of any film, make sure you did watch its original version. It makes you more laugh. I enjoyed every movie full much, very, very much, nothing to tell, because same as Grey version, but in Grey movie, you will enjoy some sex scene. And here, this guy just comes out in one minute and movie Fuck. is full of this type of comedy and the best dialogue i listen it is when the girl beating men with hunter and said and this is for the little white girl at 50 shades of gray she had to be naked the whole movie this is best dialogue that's what i said it I was me again <laughs> i don't know why it's imdb rating is 3.5 i noticed people is not rating much to comedy movies but i give it a nine some movies have low rating but doesn't mean it is flop not once in it it earned double than its budget I don't know why the why the I am not watching it for a long time. I thought it is just same as Grey version, but yesterday when I watched it's a trailer, then I got interest. Nine out of ten. <laughs> I kind of agree. <laughs> <laughs> like all the same points I was touching on. Whatever the point was, you agree with it. <laughs> Fully. No, we're on the same page. In this every is... respect. Dear Lord. Here's the the last review I've got. It's a shorter one. Hilarious by Madeline Grossman. You people have no sense of humor. Yeah. I was crying through the whole thing. Yeah. Entire lead cast was hysterical. Yeah. R.I.P. Florence Henderson. Yeah. 10 out of 10. Yeah. (laughs) 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 They're all right. Funny as hell. Are these supposed to be funny? Because it just sounds like the most logical response to this film. 3.5 my fucking ass. It's not a 10 out of 10. It's not a 10 out of 10. It's a 9 out of 10. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. You can't do that. Yeah, no. You can't do that. Think yeah, look, about maybe, think about what we have here. Maybe I have gone a bit far. Yeah. This is this is still barely a movie. Yeah. It still barely functions as a movie. Yeah. Remember, I know I know that you don't like a good year. I just wouldn't watch it again. I know, but it is a movie in every way. So is this. It looked great. It's it's barely a movie. Why? <laughs> Why? It follows a plot, just like Fifty Shades of Grey did. <laughs> Technically, it's got the same structure as Fifty Shades of Grey. That's why I think it's better than The Hungry Games. <sighs> oh, yeah. The Hungry Games was such a low you as know? well. It really, it really was. But really, like, I, I laughed. I laughed. Put your money where your mouth is, Ward. <laughs> Tell me what your review is. <laughs> <laughs> I came into this today thinking mm. I would go above a five, but you're right. You're right. You're right. I can't. I can't. I can't give it above a five. And yet, there were so many bits that I laughed at. Abigail. I'll remember it more than a good year. I'm torn. <laughs> I'm so torn. I'll give it a f- 4.8. <gasps> so it is under, but, but only it's close just. close enough to. It's very close. It's still very high. <laughs> yeah. Especially compared to the IMDb rating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what does the IMDb like rating mean? It's all bullshit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. give a fuck. We, it does. And that's the whole thing. We're trying to, in this moment, give this movie a numeric, a single numerical rating that is all-encompassing of its quality. A, a, a fruitless and, and garbled endeavor that mm. leads only to madness. Mm. As we just witnessed. I watched you go through grief, reprieve, all manner of feelings mm. in the attempts to try and wrestle your disparate feelings about this wild piece of art. And I came through. And you did it. I I followed my ethics and my morals. I couldn't give it above a five. You couldn't do it. I swallowed my pride. And yet you wanted to. And yet, don't you wish we instead had a system not based on numbers? Or at least based on more than one number. Not based on a single number. But based on feeling. Based on feeling. Based on heart. 
soul, mind, clarity. Yes. About drive. Ambition. Power. Performance. <laughs> Agility. Speed. Strength. Wisdom. Dexterity. Charisma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a four. All right. Fair enough. I think it's a four. I right. think it's a four. Which is high yeah. for some of the recent things we've watched. Right? I know. I'm not, you've convinced me. I came in thinking it would be a two. Wow. You've helped me bump it up a full two. Yeah. I mean, those laughs, you can't you can't deny. It. Like, there, there's so many films that make me just despondent yeah this film didn't do that and actually made me laugh that counts for something it, it does. does it does it genuinely does On this list it does even now when describing some of the jokes we laughed yeah and we laughed hard why are you showing me that i don't know what to do <laughs> that's a good joke that's what we do all the time it, it is Okay, so I think if anything, what we're making the case for is either this movie is funny or the listeners should stop thinking we're funny. 100%. Listeners, you make that choice. Yeah. Today. You make it in your heart, in your soul. In in your your mind, your clarity, (laughs) your strength, your dexterity, your wisdom, your charisma. All of that. Put it together and then give us a numerical rating of comedy. Please, quantify. Quantify. And you know where you could share that? On social media. (laughs) That was smooth. Yeah, thank you. You could find us on Twitter at Rate Descend Pod. You could find us on TikTok at Rating Descending, or you could email us at Rating Descending at gmail.com. If you do, don't forget to leave your numerical rating of how funny you think we are. <laughs> or you can find us on YouTube now. We're at Rating Descending at YouTube. Yeah. Well, you could find me on my own personal social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Michelle.St. Clair. I'm on Letterboxd at M. St. Clair, though I haven't been watching many movies recently because I've been busy as fuck. Yeah. And, you know, as always, like check out No Ordinary Love on YouTube. Check out Shippers, the series at Shippers Series on YouTube. Check out Unerased on Instagram at minus, unera- at, at minus 18 Youth. And please, pretty please, with a cherry on top, don't forget to leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. It really makes a difference. Goodbye. Oh, wait. What are we watching? No, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> that was 50 Shades. It was so close. So close, man. That was 50 Shades of Black. Abby, what are we watching next week? Next week, we are watching Spy Kids 4. All the time in the world. And I'm excited because we have seen this before. We have seen this before. And it's such a good time because so we keen. get four Jeremy Pivots. <laughs> four Je- in this In the way that we've got four Sylvester Stallones, <laughs> yeah. we get four Jeremy... It's, it's, actually, it's, it's way worse as a trade-off. I'd rather four <laughs> Sylvester Stallones, no. but four Jeremy Pivots. You ever watched Jeremy Piven in something and went... <laughs> I could do with more Piven. You ever well. watch Joel McHale in something and you're like, oh, you should stick to TV. <laughs> well. <laughs> Have I got the movie for you? You ever watch Jessica Alba in something and you're like, where'd she go? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, do I know where. <laughs> Join us next week for Spy Kids 4. All the time in the world. Goodbye.